So um, I want to talk about why I built Ant Runner and what it does. I'm not going to read this slide to you, uh, but these are just a few of the common uh, reasons AI projects fail. I do a lot of consulting work. I talk to a lot of people, um, and uh, uh, often it comes down to being shooting for the moon, not taking uh, opportunities to build small AIs, and uh, not having good data quality. And so the name Ant Runner um, and ants is part of a philosophy, which is um, that you should try to build small componentized individual AI applications. And so we're going to look at a couple of those today with Ant Runner, and at the end we'll see uh, one of them running as a, a service backing a declarative uh, Copilot extension uh, for, for Bob and my uh, friends uh, in that space. So. Um, Strategies to address these failures, just to say this really simply, um, be small, uh, try to avoid major investments in giant uh, platforms, and be aware that you're working in a, a space that changes uh, really fast seismically. Uh, if you are looking at any code from like a year ago or two years ago, design um, in this space, and you consider it uh, against the state of the art capabilities that we have now in APIs, a lot of the design is gonna look wrong. Um, and it's not that it, their design was wrong, it's that the six months after they started, new options became available for them. Um, so Ant Runner uses the Assistance API. And the Assistance API is uh, OpenAI's uh, basis for the GPT's features in uh, ChatGPT. Uh, they came out in preview in Azure uh, in February and were refreshed in uh, uh, late May. And so when I say uh, the space is changing quickly, this is an example of it. A lot of the frameworks, in fact, most of the frameworks that you'll look at use uh, older APIs like completions and chat, where you sort of have to do everything. And the Assistance API wraps all, up the, wraps all the stuff up for you um, and gives you threading uh, with automatic token management that you would have to write yourself if you were using completions. Vector file search, uh, where you can upload files and search them, which where you would need on your data or an AI search and other stuff maybe that you provision for your RAG solution. Uh, they bring Code Interpreter, uh, which lets you run Python, create and upload and download files, which is amazingly useful. Um, and you would have to, uh, to build that yourself, you would have to use something like E2E and a, a, a Kubernetes solution with lots of stuff to be able to handle Python sessions and so on and so forth. And then uh, native support for uh, tool calling. And I probably left a couple of things off that it, that it also does. But, you know, it's like a black box API that can do everything that a single um, AI assistant or agent might need to be able to do. Um, and the tools... Uh, the tool calling makes a big difference where an LLM is concerned. So this slide shows um, a conversation with a famous prompt, which is how many R's are there in the word strawberry? When OpenAI came out with their O1 uh, reasoning models that take longer to think, they, this is one of the examples that they use that it could answer this question. If you have code, though, and you have tools, you don't have to worry about the LLM trying to figure out how many letters there are in a word based on gluing tokens together. It's not good at it, and that's why they use that as an example of uh, something that O1 does better. But if you use a code interpreter with Python, when you ask it how many R's there are in the word strawberry, it'll turn that into a string and count the letter R's in it and give you an answer back. Um, if this was a math problem or a database query or anything uh, uh, complicated, we don't want the LLM to to do that and have to and try to train it uh we need yeah it's like a private proxy for google results yeah and use the heck out of it i really am trying to test um thank you um uh, but uh yeah so that's what tools can do for you if the if the answer came from the database um and it matches the database then you can know that the ai didn't hallucinate in the case of the mail bot that you're using one of the things that it does is it verifies that the links um, are actually good um now unfortunately for uh, people that want to use the uh, the assistance API, uh, you get all this black box stuff, but the API itself is complicated, and it's much more complicated than uh, the chat API. And if you go into AI Studio, 
and you go into the assistance playground and start playing with it, one thing you'll notice that unlike the chat uh, playground and the completions playground, there's no deploy button here. It, you can't uh, in this playground go from an AI to a, a website uh, that has something in it. And it also doesn't have support for um, actually invoking uh, the tools. And this is a sort of a subject for a longer day, what I'm talking about. So I only have a few minutes here. Uh, but I do want to show you uh, what you get when you start using threads. So this is um, a, a, our product. And uh, I'm using multiple tools here. The first one starts off with the mail ants. And I ask it to find, uh, this is output from that email system that maybe some of you are trying right now. And so um, it found that email and it gave me the plan. It used the, uh, an M365 graph uh, call to find the messages uh, using OAuth. And uh, then it read me the email with lovely uh, pictures in it. And then I switched to a different tool, which are the drive ants, and I found a little bug here. But at the end of it, uh, it created a Word document, uh, which it uploaded to OneDrive for me. Um, and so what this shows, and this is a little different from what you'll see in the Copilot experiences, is this ability to um, use multiple dedicated assistance in a conversation uh, together where you as the user uh, are steering them to get the right kind of tool. So that when you say, I'm looking for a message, you're in the context of mail, it's going to look for a mail message versus you're in the context of Teams chat, it's going to look for a chat message. Um, so that's what a thread is all about. And that's the benefit um, of the assistance API is the ability to use all sorts of different tools. So back over to the uh, uh, to the slides here, right? So um, it's really powerful facility. Uh, it does lots of stuff. The API itself is a little is a lot harder to use than uh, uh, some other uh, older things that, you know, on the flip side, require you to spin up all your own infrastructure. So the idea here is to be able to build these quickly, to iterate quickly, and have them be small. Um, and so we need tools to do that uh, because the the playground and the other tools don't do that. And so that's where Ant Runner comes into the picture. Uh, Ant Runner is a play on the word assistant, um, along with uh, uh, some older uh, computer science uh, stuff called the actor model and an expression, one ant is no ants, which uh, means that in parallel processes, uh, we need um, lots of individual things to work together collaboratively to be able to do work. So lots of ants, they swarm in the case of the, the search uh, about there. You can get to this and we'll uh, make sure this is in the, in, uh, the uh, show notes uh, as uh, Douglas Ware Ant Runner. And Ant Runner consists of uh, the ability to define prompts uh, your files for code interpreter and vector search, the tools using open API specs, the model and the parameters, um, and it can create uh, and deploy those for you across environments. It runs the threads, um, and the end, at the end of the day, the idea is to componentize your AI as small independent things, and so as you add on to your system, you're just adding in new components, not having to retest everything that you've done before. And it also lets you preserve all of your um, definition of what your AI actually is, which is the prompt and the files and the tools and the model parameters, which are independent of um, the assistance API or chat GPT or GPT, you know, so once you've got all your business knowledge and your tools to be able to do something, maybe six months from now, there's a new model from a different vendor you want to switch to. All the things that you needed in, in this are the things that would carry over and this puts them in a nice box. Okay, so to get started uh, with this, uh, you can go to the repo. There are Jupyter Polyglot notebooks uh, in C Sharp. There's a PowerShell module. There's a durable and synchronous Azure Functions uh, library, and there's an Ant Runner lib NuGet package. Um, uh, to explain all this uh, is going to take me the whole next year, and I'm continuously adding content um, over here. Um, so the notebooks. Uh, there are nine of them, uh, and I'm adding new ones. Let's look at actually uh, one of them in real life. So we're going to look at the uh, CatFax notebook and uh, the CatFax assistant. So um, in the notebooks, we have all the different assistant definitions, the, all the ants that are used by the different notebooks. And so CatFax consists of these instructions. You use a tool to get facts about cats. And it here's the manifest, which uh, the instructions get glued into and the title and in what you want the model to be. 
Uh, and then there is an, uh, an expression for the open API schema. Now, this one is using um, a, a service that is out there for testing on the web that always returns the same results and has no auth. Um, but when I run this, um, the first thing is I download the package. Um, then I run the settings. There are instructions about how to set yourself up, which I'm adding to. Um, and so we'll just run this whole notebook. And um, it's first spitting out. These are the ones I have. It didn't find cat facts, so it shows that it's going to create it. And here's the files that are involved in creating it. Uh, it made sure it uh, existed, and then it ran it. And uh, this was the prompt, create a pro uh, plan to tell me something about fat cats. Uh, it created the plan. It called the API. Here is the response, uh, which you can see nicely as the uh, last message. You can also uh, download annotations and files. For in this case, I asked it to make a file for me. Uh, and so it ran, it ran uh, the tool to call the service. When then it used Python to create a file, which it uh, is catfats.txt, which it downloaded uh, here for me to use. And there are um, several, like I said, there's a whole bunch of samples in here. Some of these you may not be able to run unless you have good quotas. Um, these, especially these last two, uh, can, uh, with certain prompts, consume, say, 100,000 or more tokens. Um, this is uh, an example of the web search one, which I'm going to talk about um, next uh, for the... Uh, uh, the last piece, which is the the, the co-pilot um, declarative agent. So this assistant, Web Search with API Key, um, is uh, defined here, and it has uh, these instructions, and it has uh, this uh, open API schema to Bing. I had to provision a Bing uh, search instance in Azure to do this, um, and it has a manifest. And so when this one runs, uh, the Ant Runner, uh, based on the environment configuration, will put the right uh, key in it, and I'll uh, get a result back. Um, and so these are things that I can do um, uh, this weekend uh, that I just uh, ran, and these are all links to real things. Another one I'll show you um, uh, that I'll refer you to is the uh, MS Graph user profile info one. Um, this one uh, uses the uh, OData helper, and uh, when I run this, um, it's going to uh, run the what is my name prompt, and it says my name is Doug Ware, and it did this by calling uh, this open API spec or this uh, graph call to get my user profile. And again, in this repo, uh, as I build these samples out, I'm gonna write articles and lots more, more setup. It's pretty active um, and I'm pretty happy about it. Now, once you have one of these defined, uh, you can use it uh, uh, you know, with the library, with Azure Functions. And so um, this is an example of uh, a function that calls uh, the search ant assistance using the ant runner. Um, and it, this has gotten the uh, markdown instructions from the query. This is this is the whole function. It's uh, what 70 lines long. There's an HTTP trigger uh, which reads the question uh, from the body and then calls the search method, which runs the assistant using Ant Runner's run thread, um, and uh, then it spits the results out um, inside of uh, the. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, pardon me while I navigate. Um, Inside of uh, this guy here, this is uh, this is the Ant Army website. Um, when I run this, um, no, what is there to do today? This is a cut down version. This just does the web search, not all the stuff that that email uh, bot is doing uh, because the email bot takes over a minute to run and it'll time out if you try to use it um, in Copilot. Uh, if I take the same prompt, right? And so this ran the crawl. Um, here's my results, which I got back and it's uh, spitting out the answer. If I come over to Copilot, um, here's there's a declarative uh, uh, Copilot um, extension, which is using the uh, uh, local tunnel to that function app that I just showed you. And uh, if I start a new chat and I say, what is the news today in Atlanta, Georgia, or uh, we'll paste this in to get the uh, same sort of search. Uh, then uh, Teams calls my function uh, as a plugin, um, and it goes into that thing. So I can take that AI 
Ant, that application that I built, and I can use it um, in any uh, system that I want, whether it's a Copilot agent, a custom fancy user interface chatbot, um, an email, unattended email attendant, um, and um, this is how uh, we build test version manage like really core to our workflow so i hope that you'll try out ant runner and try out the notebooks um please uh click star on the uh on the repo send me emails um and just open up a dialogue uh, my my hope is that the community is going to get a lot of value out of this and i'm also hoping that uh when the november trade shows start to happen that OpenAI and microsoft don't uh <laughs> uh, completely uh, change everything by by introducing a new API surface that's more appealing. But uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it.